Welcome to the LDN Radio Show, brought to you by the LDN Research Trust. I'm your host, Linda Elsigood. I have an exciting lineup of guest speakers who are LDN experts in their field. We will be discussing low dose naltrexone and its many uses in autoimmune diseases, cancers, etc. Thank you for joining us. I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Sam Lebsock, pharmacist Michelle Moser, pharmacist Stephen Dixon. A, a caller who would like to know about LDN and pregnancy. Looks like they are currently on a 4.5 milligram dose and trying to conceive. Looks like she's a fairly busy individual. She lists a few medications that she's currently taking, specifically levothyroxine, bupropion, um, Vibrid, and Allegra plus vitamins. And the question is whether or not she could stop some of those medications and only take LDN if that would help in pregnancy. She a, a little bit further down specifically says that she has already asked a pharmacist and a gynecologist, but they weren't very sure of the answers. So how I would approach this is I, I think it's very important to really understand the breadth of a low functioning thyroid condition. I think it's important to not just look at TSH, but also look at some of the other lab parameters. And that's going to give us a lot of information, especially if you're trying to conceive. So we need to look at the free T3, free T4. Uh, we need to look at TPO, which is one of the antibodies and perhaps thyroglobulin as well. And I also like to look at a reverse T3, which indicates how stressful a situation is because that cortisol can actually allow for that uh, active molecule, which is lyothyronine to be kind of flipped around and then it becomes inactive. So that's really important to understand all the pieces of the puzzle. What we find not only in case study, but also in scientific papers is that low dose naltrexone is incredibly helpful in a low functioning thyroid situation. When we start low dose naltrexone, we still need to monitor what's actually happening with the thyroid labs because they can significantly change even as quickly as four to six weeks after starting LDN. And why that's important is because we don't want someone who is currently on therapy to all of a sudden become hyper or um, hyperthyroid or even have too much medication, particularly when you're trying to conceive, because there is a very narrow window where you have enough medication and yet not too much medication to be able to not only maintain your own metabolism, but certainly then allow for conception and then also maintaining a good viable pregnancy. And we know that Dr. Philip Boyle has done a lot of research and he's spoken on the use of low dose naltrexone in pregnancy with tremendous success. So we know that there's very few side effects, very few drug interactions, and we know that low dose naltrexone does help with allergic issues as well. So if that's the reason why she's particularly taking um, Allegra, which is an antihistamine, um, if there are some other issues going on, LDN could potentially be helpful as well with um, specifically depression. So I think that that hopefully answers the majority of the question. And um, if not, please let us know and we'll answer a little bit more. The question is, can LDN help with migraines? The answer is yes. I have seen this time and time again out of the pharmacy. Um, yes, it can help with migraines. Any type of inflammation, which a lot of times does happen um, with migraines. Um, a lot of patients have reported decreased migraines once they get on a maintenance dose of LDN. So yes, I do think it's worth a try and we've had a lot of su success with it. We have a patient who is asking if we can tell them what the benefits of LDN are for MS. So um, it's certainly something we've got plenty of experience with. Um, as the help Linda would maybe be better answering this question, actually having been uh, in that position herself. Um, but being one of the, uh, Googling this will give you uh, so many different people's stories and perspectives on MS, especially looking at the LDN Research Trust website. Um, benefits can be anything from just feeling a little bit better to improve bladder, uh, bladder control, to in improvements in pain, improvements in plasticity, and, uh, but generally it's all coming from this uh, 
overall anti-inflammatory effect that you get from taking LDN. So because NSH is, NS is such a kind of range of symptoms, I can't really say, well, one thing is going to be different because everyone is very different. So it's, with NS, it's really a case of try it and then take a, a very careful note of how you were feeling over a period of four to eight weeks and then see what has and has not improved. And most people, the majority of people, definitely get some sort of benefit in one or more symptoms, if not all. And the very minority are the ones who don't seem to get any improvement at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly that, because, I mean, you can have you know one of like 40 different symptoms when you've got ms and people usually only have a few but everybody as you say is different everybody has a different range of symptoms and it also depends on how long you've had ms you know how bad your ms is etc cetera, etc cetera. but if they go on to the ldn research trust website and do a search condition data for ms there is hundreds of videos, there are conference presentations, there's all your mechanism of actions and there's an awful lot of information there. Another attendee wants to know, is it a common side effect for TSH to rise when starting LDN? Apparently it's happened twice in the year and a half since starting LDN. So there, are, there could be a, quite a few things going on. First of all, I don't see it as a common side effect of directly between LDN causing TSH to rise. So TSH, when TSH goes up, that means thyroid function is going down. So there could be a wide variety of issues going on. It could be, is the medication that is being used to treat the low functioning thyroid, is it, uh, has it changed? Is it still being taken on an empty stomach? Are there other things going on in the gastrointestinal tract that is potentially decreasing the effectiveness or the absorption of the thyroid medication? So I don't see it as a direct correlation between LDN and the rise of TSH. Sometimes TSH goes up when we have other underlying conditions that are affecting thyroid function that are blooming or potentially gastrointestinal changes. So there isn't a one-to-one -one correlation between taking LDN and TSH going up, otherwise it would happen all the time. But I, I think there's some underlying issues that probably need to be addressed and um, that can certainly be done offline. Um, this question is, any experience with treating vertigo with LDN or any side effects of dizziness while on LDN? Um, I will say yes, dizziness is a side effect of LDN. I see it sometimes when a patient maybe starts too high of a dose or maybe they haven't fully tapered. I, I do see dizziness a lot of times reported. What I normally tell that patient is maybe they need to go back down to their dose and stay on that lower dose a little bit longer before um, tapering up. So yes, that is a side effect. Um, generally, it's, you might just need a longer taper rather than a week. Maybe you need two weeks, maybe you need 30 days. Um, it kind of varies from there. So the next question that we have is a patient asking about the use of LDN with traumatic brain injury. Um, so there, this is uh, someone who's either had a concussion or a stroke or something physical that's happened to the brain. So I mean, there's quite a lot of information on this available. And in fact, there was a conference, I think the last conference, Dr. Sarah uh, Zistar did a most amazing presentation on this. I couldn't possibly hope to touch in two minutes, but she was very clear and explained it very well. But what I do remember is that last year, there was actually a paper published in PubMed that was trying to find, showing that um, in the animal model, naltrexone was neuroprotective against traumatic brain injury in animals and animal study. So that was actually published properly last year. So I think the answer to that is yes, but would very much depend upon the condition and, and the individual situation. Um, you wouldn't want to give the LDN instead of you know, an anti-platelet agent or an anti-stroke agent when someone's had a stroke. But then if you've got someone who's suffering with symptoms post-concussion for a long time, as Sarah has said in the past, it wouldn't be a bad idea to use it. Um, I think if the person is asking that, um, wants more information, just have a quick look again. On, I think I might be seeing this a lot <laughs> on the LDN Research Trust website to the, to the presentation which um, Sarah uh, did last time. 
Have we heard positive results of using LDN to treat idiopathic peripheral neuropathy? Yes. And, and I think you're going to hear that a lot is yes. And mainly because when we're dealing with uh, peripheral neuropathy, we're generally treating an inflammatory process. And so low dose naltrexone is excellent in helping reduce inflammation, not just centrally, but also peripherally. So we see that a lot with uh, application with mm -hmm. other medications. So the use of low dose naltrexone with other medications, not necessarily as a monotherapy, but I think no matter where you're at anywhere in the world, a low dose naltrexone would be uh, potentially beneficial in helping with peripheral neuropathy. Is LDN good for treating insomnia? So yes, I do have um, providers who like to use this part of a sleep regimen. I would say that here, the main mechanism is that a lot of times patients who have trouble sleeping is because there's some underlying um, issue going on, whether that be autoimmune, whether that be some type of pain, inflammation. So if we can get that under control with LDN, then a lot of times these patients end up sleeping better. And so they have better results and they think like, oh my gosh, my sleep is salt. But in reality, we may have like gotten their inflammation under control and now they're sleeping like a baby. So yes, in, um, LDN is very helpful for insomnia and sleep issues. And we see it used quite frequently. And a lot of times these patients, once they're on a maintenance dose, will report it's the best sleep they've ever had. Uh, a patient is asking if it is good to cycle LDN. Um, I've been taking 4.5 milligrams to help with remission. I'm assuming that's from cancer. Um, should I take a break periodically? Also, is a sublingual version better assimilated? Thank you, um, patient. So there's a bit of confusion, and I guess there might be a bit of dissension among the pharmacists who are here about uh, breaks in LDN. Um, there was a conference a number of years ago where one of the oncologists spoke about pulsing dosing between LDN and cannabinoids. And it, that caused a bit of confusion because we all thought, oh, we need to stop LDN for a week to take cannabinoids. But in the conference that then happened the year after, um, Professor Dobleish uh, clarified that in the studies that they looked at about uh, cancer cell growth, LDN was already pulsed because it was such a period of the day where you were not being exposed to naltrexone because it was clear from the body. So the pulsing was really more to do about taking cannabinoids in a pulsed way rather than the LDN. So you're already cycling on and off of LDN every day by having a gap. Um, regarding the sublingual version, better assimilated. Uh, generally, in most people not, but if you have leaky gut or you have absorption problems or you're unable to swallow uh, tablets properly, then a sublingual version is probably as well, if not better absorbed than the other forms. Um, but from, a, from an empirical point of view or from a, a patient perspective, the sublingual form that we use we only really use it where patients have had problems with the other formulations, but because in theory it uh, bypasses first pass metabolism, it may help with um, drug interactions or problems they're having with stomach cramps or any of the side effects that people have in the bio. So that's why we do that. This question kind of tags on to what Dr. Sam was saying just a few minutes ago. Very interested in LDN for sleep, getting to sleep and staying asleep. So to just piggyback on what Dr. Sam was saying just a few minutes ago, LDN can be very helpful for sleep. When people report that they're having vivid dreams, then we know that LDN is actually working, that it's actually getting into those, uh, allowing someone to get into REM sleep, which is restorative, and then we know it, it works pretty well. So when people have a hard time getting to sleep and staying asleep, Sometimes there's other mechanisms or other issues going on. And so we maybe need to look at what's going on with magnesium or melatonin, vitamin D. I mean, there's a wide variety of issues, but even if someone is um, kind of wired, but tired because their cortisol is up and uh, that's affecting their ability to kind of turn it off at night so that they can get to sleep, that is something that LDN can help with, but it may not necessarily be the only product that we wanna take a look at. And that's the beauty of low dose naltrexone is that we can start at little tiny doses and slowly work up to find that individual's very happy dose and then 
kind of take it from there. Patients had mono, um, had mono over 20 years ago. She has high Epstein-Barr virus, titer um, is still high. Um, she has chronic fatigue chronic fatigue syndrome, and she's wondering if LDN can help in lowering these antibodies levels and if it can potentially help ease her chronic fatigue symptoms. Yes, um, chronic fatigue syndrome has been, has widely have, I got to think of the right words. Um, LDN with chronic fatigue syndrome has been documented pretty well. I think it's all over the LDN Research Trust website. So yes, this is a very good treatment option. Um, for these type of patients. Um, will it help lower your antibodies? Yes, there's probably a little bit more to your story. I think I would need to know about your Epstein-Barr titer. Um, so we might have to take that offline a little bit because there could be some underlying other things going on there that I think we might need to understand. But as far as antibodies decreasing, yes, LDN will help with that. And with chronic fatigue, it's been shown to have great, um, great results there. Patient asking about using LDN to treat constipation or slow motility and asking what doses work well and what time do you tend to dose the LDN? So I have to say that I personally have no experience at all of using LDN to treat constipation. Um, it's something which we just have not come across um, in the last sort of 15, 17 years. Um, in theory, I guess if it was caused by taking opiates, then yes, but if anybody else wants to take that, um, it would be more than good. I will say that I found that LDN is kind of a pro-kinetic um, agent, so it can cause some diarrhea. Some patients do report that as a symptom initially, um, so I have seen that. Um, okay. And yet to also then roll into the next question, which is what are the main side effects you find when working with LDN? It's interesting and not to confuse this point at all, but LDN can also bind to the opiate receptors in the gut, which can actually slow the gut, right? So sometimes you might have a little bit of constipation, but I think the most, or the most widely reported side effect is vivid dreams. Um, and that can be, that can be minimized. It may not be negated, but it could definitely be minimized by really slowing that taper. And they gen generally that goes away in a, in a few days. But I will say that for some people, that's very dramatic. That can be literally the difference between being able to work or not being able to work or even care for their family. So whether we're dealing with um, sleep disturbances, sometimes a little bit of a headache, um, some people classify that as a migraine, but we usually mm -hmm. just say headache and then, uh, uh, maybe a little bit of, uh, GI issues. Those are pretty much, there's always going to be these one-offs, right? There's always going to be some other things, but I will say the majority of the time when we're following up with patients, you know, around two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, et cetera the side effects that they're talking about aren't necessarily specifically because of LDN. It's more of understanding their underlying issues that we're using LDN to treat. So whether somebody has Epstein-Barr, well, if you have a bloom, there's a, you know, for example, there was a, a wonderful naturopath from Arizona that spoke on sometimes you feel worse before you get better. Mm -hmm. Well, people classify that as, as a side effect. Well, that isn't, that isn't because of low dose naltrexone. That's because of the underlying disease. So it's really about understanding that and then keeping in touch with your medical professionals so that they can help hold your hand and walk you through that so that you don't inadvertently bail out on LDN before it's really reached its full potential. Patient is talking about L LDN and RA, um, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and yes, rheumatoid ar arthritis is fabulous to treat with LDN. It is a great cost effective treatment that you just can, that the research shows. I will say that a lot of rheumatologists, I feel like are kind of coming around. If you, if you present them, you know, these, these trials or, you know, these case studies, a lot of them are willing to try. Um, you can find all this on the LDN Research Trust website and it's really great and patients are seeing amazing results and it's 100% worth a try. Patients who's saying that they have taken LDN 4.5 milligrams daily for several years because they have microscopic colitis and didn't want to take steroids. 
Um, they don't currently have any symptoms and they've been avoiding gluten and dairy. And they're wondering whether or not after a few years they should stop taking LDN and see what happens. So I guess that's a really interesting question which comes up for us really quite often. How long should I take LDN for? Um, and there isn't really a standard answer for it that, that we find. We sort of say, well, do you know, my first go-to place is if you were doing well and nothing else worked, why would you, why would you put yourself at risk of being unwell again? But then also you don't want to take something every day if you no longer need it. So, I mean, if you're going to say, if, if normally if someone wants to take a break, we'd say, well, make sure you've got enough to restart and take a two-week break and just monitor your symptoms. And I'm, I'm guessing that's probably very similar to everyone else in the group. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so, uh, but then again, it's one of those things I would say that's on a very individual basis. If you have been doing really, really well with something much more severe, um, then maybe you would want to think twice about stopping LDN control. I would just add that I have a lot of patients who stop it and then three months later, they're calling back for their refill because they've had a flare. That's very, very common. Question is, are there particular things to know about using LDN for the following issues? Muscle pain, inflammation, and autoimmune uh, related issues. So really what we're talking about is inflammation because whether we have muscle pain, that's usually due to an inflammatory response. And low-dose naltrexone has been shown and proven in, in wide variety of scientific studies and papers that are published all over the world that low-dose naltrexone specifically works to reduce inflammation everywhere in the body. So if the muscle pain is due to overuse or a lack of nutrients, low dose naltrexone is going to help it reduce inflammation, but isn't necessarily going to help relax that muscle fiber, such as what magnesium would do, right? Because magnesium is a natural muscle relaxant. However, when we're dealing with autoimmune issues, which I think is probably the majority of the patients that we see on a regular basis using low dose naltrexone, most of the time there are side effects such as, or general symptoms of muscle pain and um, a wide variety of inflammation. And that is absolutely what LDN is, is very, very good at. And again, because there's so few side effects and there are so few drug interactions, it's definitely worth a shot. It's not very expensive and it's always low dose. And the beauty of low dose naltrexone is that if it's working, fabulous. If you don't think it's working, you can, you know, with the advice of your medical provider as you can simply stop and see what happens. That's where, you know, not only Steven and Sam have alluded to, but a lot of times people pick up the phone and they're like, oh my gosh, I did not realize how well LDN was working until I stopped. And I think we even heard that from Dr. Weinstock, Dr. Zielsdorf in a wide variety of other uh, physicians who have presented in the previous LDN seminar and then working from there. Any questions or comments you may have, please email me, linda, L-I-N-D-A, at ldnrt.org. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for joining us today. We really appreciated your company. Until next time, stay safe and keep well.